you have a fashion brand called London Army Apparel. Yes, I do. How did it begin? The idea sort of spawned out of an actual individual problem I had. So it was quite a selfish start. Mm. I had a bomber jacket, which I bought from a high street store. Not going to name name, but yeah. And it, it did the job. It was not quite the, you know, sort of it wasn't like... wasn't quite what you expected. No, no, it was kind of like the padding was a little bit, you know, it wasn't quite there. It wasn't quite the proper article, but you expect... It's what you expect from a high street store. So I bought it. After a couple of uses, like literally like the seams started to rip. A couple of uses? Yes. It was literally, there was no wear to nice. at all to it. It was really, it was really nice. depressing. So yeah. I wasted my money on that. And as you can imagine, um, polyester padding poking through. Starts to come through. Yeah, yeah. poking through a khaki colored, you know, jacket is like, mm -mm. So then I was like, yeah, there's got to be a better way. So I need like, this is what I want. This is the design I want. There are places that sell it, but I had difficulty obtaining one until I came across a wholesaler who did really like, he was offering like designs, like genuine vintage army clothes that mm. I've never seen before. Well, in person that I wanted to buy, but you had to buy them job lots. Yeah. How did, was, you, how did you meet the wholesaler? Well, I met this particular wholesaler, which I shouldn't really say because I don't want to give my trade secrets. Um, it was in Paris. Just give, you just give her an location. No one has to know where. I <laughs> my secrets, but yeah, it was in Paris, so in France, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's fair enough. No, that's good. That's good. After you met the wholesaler and sort of bought the clothes and then began to wear them and advertise yourself, what happened next? Like, how did we able to get the pop-up shop, for example? Because you had an event quite recently. In Oxford Street? I was just wearing the clothes out and about around mm. London, wherever, like on my trips, on my travels, and like loads of different creatives, people that were into fashion, street culture, streetwear would ask me, oh, like, I like that. Oh, that looks good. Like, where did you get from? So then I was like, oh, there's an idea here. And that's how I started um, looking into are there any places that actually specialize in selling genuine vintage army clothing yeah. and actually, you know, sort of targeting like, like, you know, creatives, like mm. the youth culture, yeah. et cetera. And then I did a little bit of Google research and I was like, no one really. So that's how I started the idea. Yeah. And I decided to call it London Army Apparel because based in London is army clothes. Mm. you know it was just quick and easy and then, um since basically since the, the time that I came up with the idea like maybe this is something to do no one else is doing it yeah. I've been following it up with actions so putting together a website um signing up to the Prince's Trust going on their mm. enterprise course um finding out about e-commerce, about, yeah. you know, um, different facets of business and also um, piloting it. So that sort of brings into the pop-up shop. Yeah. It was on Oxford Street and it was done in um, support of a particularly large company. I don't know if I'm allowed to say them. That's fine, yeah. That's yeah, fine. but um, because they are a little bit, I can tell you afterwards who That's they are. Fine. We'll have yeah. A kind of conversation. Yeah. So they um, supported um, hosting the actual pop up shop. Yeah. And yeah, it's just going from strength to strength. Like the more people who get to see it and are exposed to it, the more the the more enthusiasm and energy that it, yeah. the brand is sort of getting. So it's beginning to flesh out. Okay. Cool. So. But why army clothes? I wish I could give you like a, a proper answer to that, mm. but I have no idea. Like I've always had like a fascination since I was a child, like different sort of like fashions yeah, and different sort of like street looks. Mm. And I noticed when I was like sort of observing different designers, different catwalk looks and stuff like that, like the military, the fashion, the, well, the clothes in the military, were always an influence yeah. in different sort of designers. So you're talking about Burberry, Vivian Westwood, 
you know, all sorts of like different designers. They sort of take what, at various different points, like from the army, from the navy, from the mm. you know the air forces. So I was like, hmm, like because I do I do like these designers, but obviously they're getting influences and inspiration from something further back. Mm. So as you sort of like you mature and get older and you get used to doing research, you start looking at, you know, the people who influence you, who are their influences. Mm. And then that's sort of is that's how that I you know, the sort of love for military clothing sort of started. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah. How did your family help do you did you have any like support system and stuff to help you get started? Um I guess so. I mean because I'm very like self-sufficient mm. from a very young age, like I'm always like doing something, always like on the go. I don't really need that much hand holding. Okay, cool. But they are like that. I the very supportive in the sense that because if they thought it was a bad idea, they would definitely let me know. They would definitely be very vocal about you know you're wasting your time. Yeah. You need to knuckle down. The fact that they haven't done that, they're very supportive. They're giving me like useful ideas that, you know, um, sending me different, you know, resources to use and, you know, to pursue. That's how they're supporting me. So, I like that. I like that. I mean, there's no bank of like, you know, bank of mum and dad. So, oh, no, so I'm not going to get any old. funding for yeah. but I think the, the, the fact that they're sort of like, you know, they're looking and like, okay. Well, they're being yeah. practical. So that's, yeah. 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 This is what you want. You don't want just want emotional support. You want some like practical yeah. assistance, which is, which is good in that. In this yeah. Case. Yeah. You're wearing one of the jackets now? Yes, I am. So how does that compare to your high street one that you bought? Oh my god! Well, this is about twice the the size <laughs> in padding. Like the other one was really like, like was right the, up. It was, was dire. It tight? So, was it like a tight jacket in terms of like? It wasn't no, really it was tight. loose, but it was thin. So you would expect like it to be a p proper padded jacket. It was just like, oh god! It was just like the excuse for padding, but it was still <laughs> loose as well. And I remember I was like, I had it zipped up, and I was um, queuing for the ladies in another music venue and they had like a large like long mirror so you mm. could like basically see yourself yeah. and I said why do I have a bit of a like, it looks like I have a bit of a stomach hanging down it was the actual jacket that was so, like sort of like yeah, folded over yeah it was just folding over itself so I was like this is just ridiculous and it was meant you expect it to be a high street version of a of a jacket a bomber yeah. jacket you expect it to be more um sort of tailored and updated yeah. to a modern silhouette it yeah. was the reverse it was awful yeah are your clothes like for men and women they are for men and women okay most of the designs that actually were for men yeah but what i'm what i've discovered is like the clothes they take on they're so the, they're so well designed and well made yeah. like they take on the body shape of the person so for instance i wear a lot of the clothes out and about so if a guy is like particularly interested in the design he would say he'll always say like okay but do you do anything for men and i'm like yeah. excuse me this is a men's this is a men's you know jacket this is a men's like whatever mm. But it, because it fits so well onto my body, yeah. it doesn't look it. But if I take, like, for instance, take this jacket off and put on you or, or someone else, mm. it will take on the personality, the body shape, the, the style of the person. So that they're, they're so versatile and so useful. So That's key. Mm. That's key. Um, in terms of, like, you've got a wholesale at the moment, do you source the clothing or do you manufacture it? I um, source from various different places. Okay. So, and I very particular in how I source things. Okay. I want them to be of a particular quality and p particular sizes mm. uh, because we do update them to the modern silhouette. So they st they look modern, they look current. Yeah. Uh, manufacturing at this moment in time, we're currently not manufacturing okay, cool. at the moment. But it depends on how the demand goes. If you can't keep up with the demand of then clothes, you yeah. Have to grow the yeah. Well. So, okay. so we'll see. So, but it's still early days. That's so, good. Yeah. So, where do you want to be in a year? Definitely more established. Yeah. 
um, website to be more developed. Yeah. Um, more brand awareness. I want more people to know about what we do, why mm. we do it. God, um, the team is is increasing as we speak, but hopefully, like things as the the. I mean, I don't really want to call it a business. I kind of like want to call it a project, but uh -huh. um, hopefully, like the project, like everything becomes a little bit more established, like okay. the operations, how we do things, you know, things become a little bit more um, consistent. Because okay. right now it's still early days and we, you know, we're still like sort of experimenting, like what works, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And also factoring in time. When you do a startup, you have to do everything from scratch. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's, it's hard enough, like, I know from experience working from a large corporation, like keeping things running. Mm. But could you imagine like something that hasn't existed, in, you know, previously, like you literally have to start up and keep it running. So yeah, it's like got, double you, the energy. You've got to work longer hours and you never work at work because yeah. you're trying to get a business off the ground. So. Yeah, yeah. So, and it takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of momentum to keep that up. So hopefully that will, you know, you know, I can keep up with that be consistent mm. but i think I, I don't think that's going to be, really be a problem because the project is like it's just a great project to be on like mm. people just love it it gets me excited so mm. wait is that a passion project for you i guess so maybe okay why do you call it a project and not a business i think of a project but as a creative like it's much more of a safe word for me to use mm. and it's it makes it feel more like a <clears throat> something that is born out creativity, whereas business could seem a little bit more like, you know, Richard, profit, yeah, yeah, profit and loss, you know, is this, you know, viable? Is this, you know, it can mm. see a little bit more, a little bit black and white. And is it more pressure? More pressure? A In project? terms of like calling it a business over a project? Um, I don't think so because it's pressure of a project. If you believe in something and you want it to do well, mm. you put yourself under pressure to do things and to, to make things happen. I like so, that. Like, I like that. Cool. Exactly. Even if it's like your own hobby, like if you want it done a certain way. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna. Yeah, you're gonna yes, it. Yeah. absolutely. And to me, I don't think there's less pressure, but Obviously, I think it's much more of like, you know, a better word to use project. Yeah. I hear that. Yeah. How can the people get your clothes? Currently now they can go on our website, which is londonarmyapparel.com. Yep. We have a Instagram platform. Yep. Which is also at London Army Apparel. Yeah. Uh, which they'll be able to like buy clothes through. So we're most likely going to have like another pop-up shop this year. Okay. But I can't say the details because nothing is confirmed yet. But stay oh. tuned. If you want to find out, you know, go on the website, you know, visit our Instagram. So, yeah. All right, cool. Angelique, thank you for joining us for the interview. Thank you so much for having me.